A very warm welcome art lovers to the art vlog with me George Dopamine. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to get previews and reviews of shows from across London, the South East and beyond. Today you find me on the wonderful streets of Edinburgh where I want to take you to the Barbara Hetworth show which is happening at the Scottish National Modern Gallery of Art. Um, it's going to be on until the 2nd of October and is £12 to get in. So if you're an Edinburgh resident or maybe you're coming up for the festival, this show may be for you, I'll let you know. And Barbara Hetworth is one of the titans of 20th century world art, let alone British art. Born in 1903 in Wakefield, um, she became friends early on with Henry Moore. Um, she was somebody who made sure she was in touch with many of the different art trends that were developing in the early 20th century, visiting Picasso's studio amongst others. Um, she produced work, sculptural work, primarily in stone and wood, but later on developed to using bronze as well. She's an incredible figure in her own right. Um, she, she, she married the, sculpt, the, the abstract painter Ben Nicholson and undoubtedly was the preeminent artist of the pair. Together they had triplets and she, as opposed to, to fulfilling the stereotype of the time, she carried on producing outstanding art and lots of her art is publicly displayed in many places across the UK. She moved in the Second World War to St Ives in Cornwall where she lived in her studio which you can visit. She tragically died of a, in a fire in her studio at the age of 72 in 1975 and this brought to an end a career where she produced many many works which are very very highly regarded. I'm not a hugely massive fan of her, but I obviously can appreciate the beauty of her works. And so I'm really looking forward to coming to this exhibition in Edinburgh and take bringing it to you and getting to know um, a little bit more. It promises to be, if not a full retrospective, a really interesting exploration into her whole artistic career. So come and join me as we enter this beautiful gallery, one of the most stunningly situated modern art galleries in the UK, and explore Barbara Hetworth. So this is the Scottish National Gallery Modern 2. Um, as you can see, it's a beautiful building, and the main gallery is just behind it. Um, this is where the Barbara Hetworth show is going to be. It's about a 10 to 15 minute walk from Prince's Street in the middle of town. So if you're up here visiting, then you can um, obviously uh, just walk out here. Um, it is possible, I think, to get buses as well.
So some highlights there um, and some choice works from the uh, Barbara Hepworth Art and Life show, I think I got that wrong earlier, at the um, Scottish National Gallery of Modern Art here in Edinburgh. This show is transferred here, by the way, from the Hepworth um, Gallery in Wakefield, and it will be transferring on down into St Ives. So a really nice geographical spread for this massive work, this massive show from Scotland, from, from, from Yorkshire to Scotland down to the southwest. So, yeah. What did I think of the show? Well, um, I, I mean, it was it was broadly chronological. There was a room. First room was about the um, the her three three major forms that she were valuable to her throughout her life and then the rest of the rooms upstairs from room two to six basically took us through her life and the really interesting thing about that was you saw how she developed the explosive movement between room two and three as she went from figurative to purely abstract and you know there's a quote from her which which says that as she had her triplets it, 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 it changed the form of her work that was the first thing and then and then the big transformation and um, between rooms four and five when she went back to working in bronze she I mean what really struck me were two things which I absolutely loved first of how she very quickly became a master of many many different forms um, obviously marble which she loved um, as you can see here and wood she very quickly um, became a master in wood and there are some absolutely beautiful pieces as you can see here wooden pieces of wooden sculpture but then latterly how she transferred to bronze um, and, and, and then back to marble at the end. Um, the second is, is the surprising diversity of her works in terms of it, the visual art as well and the sheer scale of, um, of, of her interest from politics to space travel to religion and constantly beating at the heart of this is, is the arts, not just, not just visual arts but poetry, dance as well. So that was very, very interesting. And the, th the, the other thing that really struck me was that she was an incredible woman working in a man's world. She was working from the 1920s through to the 1970s when she died. And especially in the first bit of this period, um, this was very much, don't make, make no mistake, a man's world. When she had the triplets with Nicholson, it was her at home who was expected to, to look after them. And she managed to create for 30 minutes and then cook for 30 minutes, then play with the children for 50 minutes, then create. Having said that, um, the show does do light touch on the biographical details. It lets the work do the talking. So I would say if you want to be immersed, I mean, this is the biggest range of work since her death on show in any one exhibition. And so if you really want to be immersed in those beautiful works that you've just seen, then do come along. And I think £12 is very, very good value. Sorry, I'm just going to come out into the beautiful Edinburgh sunshine. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was a really positive thing for me about it. There were two things which held me back a bit. The first, and I share this with Henry Moore as well, is that you can't have a true retrospective of Hepworth without her monumental works. These are alluded to in, in some preparatory works that are shown throughout the exhibition and also the reference to her very famous work at, unveiled in the 60s at the United Nations um, which but, but obviously you don't get to see these monumental works many of which are in situ around the world there's no place for them in the gallery so the retrospective feels curiously incomplete in this sense the second thing I would say is that this exhibition is so vast and there are so many works and obviously because of Hepworth's repeated use of different forms, sometimes these do begin to blur into one a little bit. Um, having, I mean, uh, and, and, and that is obviously really a message to take your time. I actually went round the exhibition twice um, to really pull out some of the works. And there's some wonderful highlights, the surgeon's paintings I hadn't seen before, the hospital paintings, which she got very interested in after her daughter was taken to hospital, for example. So, um, yeah, those two things, the fact that you can never really have a true representation of Hepworth's work, and the fact that it is a very big exhibition, um, which sometimes isn't a problem, but be, be aware and take your time and maybe have a cup of coffee or half a cup of tea halfway through, as I did. Yeah, but having said that, I am not being negative. Um, the, um, the, the show is a wonderful representation of her work. We see her sheer dynamism, her sheer 
desire to create um, within, within this exhibition. Yep, so overall, um, would I recommend this show? Well, if you're into sculpture, especially abstract sculpture, and you want to see some beautiful, smooth, curvaceous work, then certainly come to this show. You won't get a more comprehensive collection of Hepworth's work in one piece in the next, in the next few years. And, it, and, and there is something um, soul-soothing about her creative dynamism and how she overcame so many hurdles in her life, including the death of her son, to keep on creating right until the end um it's a brilliant i would give this show seven out of ten and um it's on until the second of october so if you're living in edinburgh or the central part of scotland or you're coming to visit for the festival do make time to come along and give yourself a good half day to immerse yourself in this world world the cafe is lovely it's you there's nothing to stop you going into that and then um and then going um going in there and then going back around the show. Do remember to subscribe to the art vlog and hit that notification bell for upcoming news and reviews. I'm going to be going to the wonderful sounding Jupiter Artland um, to preview and then review the Trace, new Tracy Emin show which is on there which includes loads of new um, uh, painted works um, which, which have been produced in 2021 and 2022 as well as a set piece um, sculpture which is going to be a permanent installation so do join me for that next thursday and get out there and explore the wonderful wonderful uk art scene